potentially the greatest Mega Drive game of all time, and greatest beat-em-up game as well, Streets of Rage 2 is simply amazing. Pick from four characters, each with their own unique stats, then get out onto the streets and let out your rage. It feels so satisfying to kick and punch the crap out of all the enemies with a killer soundtrack to boot. The game takes everything good from Streets of Rage 1 and simply improves on it, turning it into one of the best sequels ever as well. Not only can you punch and kick opponents, but grab them for close-up combat or even throw them with various suplexes. A new addition is the ability to perform a special attack that will mess up anyone near you, but at the cost of some health. So it's not something you can simply spam over and over again to make the game easier. This game rules. Utterly rules. Just just join it out there. We'll play again. Another big arcade title ported over to the Mega Drive to show its power and to entice arcade gamers to pick up a console and play at home. Strider is a fun as hell action game that sees you running and jumping like a crazy acrobat around levels as you slice enemies apart. Literally in half. Honestly, th th there isn't much more to say about this one. G give it a go and no doubt you'll love it too. We'll play again. Super Fantasy Zone is a bright and colourful shooter that differs from your basic shooters at the time. Instead of just going from one side of the screen to the next and finishing a level that way, you have a large open level with a number of specific enemies that you have to destroy in order to move on. Along the way you can collect money from destroyed enemies, and if you find a shop, you have the chance to upgrade your ship. Just remember that some of the upgrades are temporary and have a meter attached to them. Once it runs out, the upgrade is gone. Some people might see this as an issue, but personally I like it. It stops you from becoming too overpowered all the time, and encourages you to maybe buy a different power-up next time, rather than just buying one and never having the need to change it up. Oh, and the music rules too. It's just so fun and happy. Just what you need when you're blowing things up. We'll play again. Bonus game time, again! Tetris on the Mega Drive is an extremely rare title these days, because it was technically never supposed to be released. At the time, Nintendo had the rights to Tetris, so when it showed up on the Mega Drive, legal issues may have risen. Less than 10 physical copies are thought to exist these days. Tetris, however, tends to show up on everything now. So, we finally get to experience the Mega Drive version. And you know what? It's Tetris. Only it doesn't sound as good, and 70% of the screen is taken up with some blurry screensaver. At the end of the day, it plays just like Tetris always has, but if you have the choice, play a different version. I'd sooner grab my Game Boy cart and play that instead. Or the NES version. Uh, the DS version. If it's all you have, it's fine, it's Tetris. Otherwise, go with a different version. Won't play again. <laughs> 